We're going to put a 100 percent tariff on every single car that comes across the line. And you're not going to be able to sell those cars. If I get elected, now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. As dangerous and clearly deranged as Trump is, we have to start asking not just what's wrong with a society that produces so much support for this chaos theater, but also who is it that so badly wants Trump to be president, not just at the bottom, but at the top. There is a term in Latin, qui bono. It means who benefits? Because beyond the angry masses who want to luxuriate in the punishment of migrants, women, trans kids, and black collegians, the real beneficiaries of a Trump autocracy would be those the late great comedian George Carlin used to call the owners of the country, men of great wealth, who have long sought to return to a time when people like them didn't pay income taxes or face government regulation over their businesses and didn't have to worry about labor unions, workers' rights, or competition from women or blacks. They could employ child labor, work their employees way past a 40-hour work week, and reap unlimited profits and leave vast estates to their heirs tax-free. They could call themselves good Christians and never think twice about dirty words like diversity, history, accountability, or equity. These are the men behind organizations like Project 2025, the Claremont Institute, the Heritage Foundation, and whatever Leonard Leo was up to at any given time. Trump, in many ways, is just their useful, scary clown. And while some of these groups are loudly proclaiming these plans to take our country back to the 19th century, others are flying under the radar, like a group called Society for American Civic Renewal, or SACR for short. This group was uncovered earlier this month by Talking Points Memo, which described them as a secret, men-only right-wing society with members in influential positions around the country who are on a crusade to recruit a Christian government that will form after the right achieves regime change in the United States, potentially via a national divorce. Joining me now is the journalist who wrote this story, Josh Kavinsky, investigative reporter for Talking Points Memo. Josh, thanks for being here. And I wish that this sounded fanciful, but it doesn't. Please explain who Sacker is and what they want. Yeah, so what Sacker wants is kind of what we said in the story, which is that they want to populate the government of what they call a future-aligned regime. So what is that? Um, a future aligned regime is kind of, as you said, it would be a government going back, you know, before the 1960s, before the 1930s, before the progressive era at large. It would be a government that, you know, might sound familiar to people who lived in America in the 1890s. So the other kind of interesting thing about Sacker is who's uh, who's allowed to join. It's only available to men. It's only available to certain kinds of Christians. And they have other criteria as well. Um, you have to be influential. You have to have some kind of wealth. It's very restrictive. And again, it's only certain kinds of Christians and certain kinds of men. So what they're doing here is they're trying to kind of, you know, inculcate this like em embryonic like version of what they're what they want society to be like, of what they want, you know, people who would govern America to be like in this very small secret society. And these are not like the disgruntled, like the people you see at Trump rallies, right? Like those people can't join. You have to be rich, right? Can you give us some of the names of people? Because the Claremont Institute guy is involved. These are like wealthy white men, male Christians, right? Yeah, that's what's critical about it. So Ryan Williams, he's the president of the Claremont Institute. He's, he's a member of the national board. Um, there's some other people. There's Nate Fisher in Dallas. He is a Harvard Law graduate. He worked in private equity for a few years. Um, you know, there's Scott Yenner. He's a professor at Boise State University. He uh, became notorious a couple of years ago for saying that he thinks that professions like engineering and law and medicine should stop recruiting women into their ranks. Um, so, yeah, I mean, look, these are not, you know, people who are kind of economically downscale. These are not downwardly mobile people. These are people who are basically the winners in our society. Um, and I think when you think about the kind of resentment that, you know, this group represents, again, it, it's not resentment directed upwards from people who have lost out for whatever reason. What it is, is it's rage uh, from people with money and status and position directed downwards to the rest of our society. It's them saying that they want a certain hierarchy that they believe does not exist right now or is being corroded. And they're trying to kind of create that or, re or revive it. What would happen with women in this kind of a society they want? Well, I think a really telling thing is what they look for in their members. 
And what they ask for is their member, their, so again, their members are all male and they want their members to be dominant in their household. Um, they phrase that a few different ways in the documents that we obtained. Um, but the message there is clear. They believe that they believe in a very traditional strict version of hierarchies and they believe that men should be at the top of them. I think another tell, Joy, is that one thing they say in terms of their objectives is they want to form the government of, as I said, a future aligned regime. And since they're all men, you know, clearly they believe that men should be the ones in charge of yeah. local state. And the weirdest thing government. about them. So, you know, yeah. 